The robot revolution continues in Iron Man 2020 number three, the first out of the gate event for Marvel. Don't worry, we've got Empire coming up soon enough to uh, wash the taste of this out. You know, I don't normally do reviews of comics I dislike. I think that's cheating. I think you should um, you should focus. You should do reviews of the comics you like. I, nobody, I should. Nobody wants to hear a roast of a comic. Nobody wants to hear me just bag on a comic. So I'm going to try and do this review a little differently. This is not a good comic, but let's let's talk about why. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, Iron Man 2020. Um, what can you say about this event? We're, this is the third issue into the event, and boy, it, it feels like it's been a while. So this is the event that Dan Slott has been building to, kind of his entire Iron Man run. This was the pitch that he gave uh, Marvel. I've confirmed it now. This is kind of the big idea that he was coming into. And um, Christos Gage, uh, who's a legit writer, I mean, good, good guy. Uh, Pete Woods, the artist. Um, who again, I, I've maintained is a good artist, uh, but he's doing the penciling and inking duties. And I think a little rushed here. So this issue actually holds up better than the second one, um, in terms of kind of the art quality, we're getting some, some landscapes and he's putting in some decent work to it, but penciling and inking together, I think is a tough job. And I think you could take anyone, I mean, from Jim Lee to Todd McFarlane on down and you get a high quality pencil, pencil or a high quality inker, I think you've got a better book than somebody who's doing it all in one. But that's just my own uh, choice. So, you know, it's rare in a comic that right out the very first speech bubble, you know you're screwed. And uh, this is Herbie the robot freaking out saying, we are so bricked. And if that isn't the quote of this issue, I don't know what is. Um, so where we left off, uh, Tony Stark the uh, kind of fake Tony Stark that was killed by Captain Marvel and kind of resurrected in a flesh AI, whatever that is, um, came is leading the robot rebellion against Arno Stark and Sunset Bane, who is uh, Bane is kind of the wahaha criminal of this whole thing. And um, Arno Stark is doing it for reasons, which we'll get into in a bit. And uh, and they they formulated a, a heist, if you will, a, a crazy heist to get the robots and sneak in and do all this kind of stuff. But aha, Arno Stark was one step ahead of them, and everything went so bricked in in Herbie's words. So now, um, you know, Awesome Andy, a machine smith who is uh, kind of now stuck in a tablet that's hanging around Andy's neck, is uh, running away from from the uh, evil Arno Stark. Uh, henchmen, if you will, they get out and they basically make the call out to all the different robots on the whole planet that uh, the humans are dodgy as F and that we need to rebel and get things going. Uh, trouble is afoot. So um, so right here, uh, we'll pause for a minute because now you know all the robots are going to come in. I just want to point out that a little bit more than six months ago, House of X, Powers of X kind of set up the entire a danger of the X-Men and the future mutants and everything else as Nimrod and the Sentinels and, and all that. So you've got a, a tech threat coming the way of, of uh, you know, of, of this kind of future. And then here, Iron Man, kind of a big franchise character, right? You know, part of a big movie for the MCU and everything is bringing the robot rebellion in the jokiest, corniest way possible. It's interesting to put the two books side by side and point out, you know, one, here is how you do a really good, effective, uh, you know, AI robot storyline. Not this issue, but but the X-Men stuff that has a good threat and a good sense of seriousness. And this Iron Man is really a Saturday morning cartoon. And, and in some ways, this issue does help a little bit if you think about it like aimed at kids. And we've been talking about how um, Marvel and DC and a lot of the publishers have struggled in putting out a comic book that's for kids. Well, guess what? It's here. This is it. Um, now, the only flaw in all this is, you know, Marvel isn't marketing this for kids, but it's clearly for kids. Um, this is clearly not for any, you know, functioning adult. Um, unfortunately, there's, you know, uh, kids probably wouldn't enjoy this because there's a million little word bubbles and things going on. And yeah, kids like to read. But anyway, so the robots are smashing each other. Back to the issue. Um, Tony Stark is kind of doing his thing and he reveals, ha ha. His heist that was spoiled by Arno Stark is actually was a trick to get Arno close to him so he can pull off a different heist. But no, Arno Stark is ahead of him. Again, the game of, of brainy what upsmanship continues. And, and I hear, I think, somebody watched Ocean's Eleven and is really trying to do a ha-ha, top this kind of storyline. Unfortunately, 
sucks. Um, Arno kidnaps Tony, kind of, uh, you know, knocks him out, and um, and then he, you know, fades to black. Um, meanwhile, we get kind of the resolution. You know, the Sunset Bane is kind of the big uh, criminal behind all this. Arno is doing it for, you know, in theory, good reasons. He believes a big threat is coming to kind of wipe out all life on Earth. No, it's not uh, the techno virus from the X-Men. It's a different big threat that's coming. Why these, why, why people cannot coordinate, I have no freaking idea, but apparently they can't. Anyway, uh, Sunset Bane fires somebody. We get the Chuck E. Cheese robot, uh, character leading a protest for robot rights. Um, again, this, it, this all helps if you think about it aimed at like a seven-year-old. It, it definitely helps. So, um, Sunset Bane's doing her evil thing. Tony wakes up with his reincarnated parents who are, again, AIs in flesh, kind of like Tony himself. You know, definitely it's going to set up some tragic, uh, the parents are going to go away by the end of this. Uh, but anyway, uh, Arno kind of is being egotistical and then he, he decides to, um, you know, kind of reveal his big threat. Um, it's weird to see Tony Stark's dad reduced to, uh, you know, he's a, he's a, this, this Tony with the long hair is a dirty hippie. Um, could, could, I'm sad to say here, could Howard Stark be any more pathetic? Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Uh, let's take a brief skip over to Avengers where it was just revealed that Tony Stark's dad, Howard was in some kind of weird Mephisto deal where he was in a strange sex cult club. So, uh, so, so we got, we got, we got that going for us. Awesome. Anyway, um, again, back to this uh, Iron Man issue. So, we, you know, the the plan is revealed. Uh, Tony is like, oh, if anybody's got a good reason for you to do all this, it's good. You know, I, I let I trust you. Let's hear it. So now they're complimenting each other. We hear about the big threat. Uh, Tony immediately dismisses it all as uh, part of the recorder's um, kind of crazy delusion. It's nice to see a little tie-in to the Karen Gillian run of uh, Iron Man. I think, uh, I mean, at least somebody's remembering some history. Um, it's not exactly how that, that story was, but that's okay. Um, you know, Tony starts to throw some shade and then suddenly the big robot, uh, whatever this thing is, constructor <laughs> construction thing starts, uh, you know, going with a robot rebellion. It gives Iron Man the chance to escape and, and blow up the satellite. Now here is what happens. I've worked in the tech industry. I've certainly done a lot of technology and software. Um, people who do not understand technology and software writing books about it, uh, always super painful. Like Dean Koontz every now and then in his books would write about technology and it was always like, yeah. Uh, Jim Butcher is another one that would write about technology from time to time. He may have improved, but his stuff was like, you, you'd read it and it's like, and then he took out the phone machine and he made a call through the magical airway. You're like, oh, you, you should not write about technology. Um, here we see um, this whole storyline about technology, but the writer is um, is giving away the fact that I think his knowledge of technology comes from like, you know, did you know things in Twitter? Um, so <laughs> it's Iron Man, uh, Tony Stark makes a last ditch effort to try and stop this robot rebellion, gets in there, uh, he's going to blow it up. Arno's going to stop him. Herbie shoots him in the butt with a big rocket launcher. And uh, he, he, you know, he stops this, the robot obedient thing from happening. And Arno blows up everybody, including Tony. He falls to the ground. The robots are like, oh my God, he's dead. And he looks dead. Now, I mean, it's, a, it's an AI instead of flesh construct that, you know, pretty much anybody could recreate. But uh, for some reason, this is tragic. All right. Uh, where do we all go from here? Well, believe it or not, this is the fifth issue in the Iron Man 2020 uh, event. Um, why is that significant? Well, because there are, as it turns out, 13 more issues left to go, meaning we are just barely more than a quarter of the way through this. <laughs> so and you just have to laugh and then be in pain. Um, I, I don't know what to say. This is such a bizarre choice um to be to be doing this i mean i guess uh robert downey jr is dead and so the mcu doesn't really care about what happens to iron man anymore um that's one reason why we do this I again if this was marvel adventures iron man by idw um okay again makes complete sense but the fact that this is the core iron man title and more than that this was a summer event that they're hoping to sell i mean these these books are are not flying off the shelves 
um, is, is not helping Tony Stark. You simultaneously have Tony Stark over in the Avengers being, you know, exceedingly different. Um, it's confusing why this is happening, but Hey, um, a comic is getting produced, right folks? That's, that's what's going on. So how could this be better? Well, I mean, the idea of a robot rebellion and AI kind of, um, you know, consuming things and, and taking over is a very interesting idea and, and I think could make a good comic. In fact, it did about seven months ago in House of X, Powers of Ten. Um, I think you could pick up on those things. I think you could probably, in a very capitalist, uh, you know, big company way, hook on to that storyline. I mean, God, if you've got Iron Man and he's a tech guy, why not go over to old Hickman's house and knock on the door and be like, hey, you've got a couple of ideas here. Let's make this Iron Man 2020 event tie into some of the stuff you're doing with uh, Orcus and and let's use these things that are super hot. Probably double the sales. I mean, you're Marvel. You own both. Why not? I mean, you're producing... I mean, what is it, roughly 80 X-Men comics a month right now? I mean, what's a couple more? You know, why not tie into that? It's right there. But no, instead, we had to do a completely different robot revolution that kind of asks you to forget about everything going on in the X-Men land and also turn off your brain a little bit and just kind of picture these things like, uh, you know, it, it, there was an old joke once where, you know, they would say that Michael Bay for the Transformers fights would just like take a big plastic bag and fill it with water and then just dump a couple metal parts in it and then just shake it up real good and then film it. And that was how the battles were. This is how this comic reads. It's like somebody, you know, put a bunch of bolts on a page and then shook it up and the robots punch each other. Stuff happens. And then a lot of corny, corny jokes. Um, you know, again, I, you can, you can make these kinds of jokes and I guess it's funny to someone, but, um, it, it, it's hard. It's hard when you've had such good Iron Man stories or even mediocre Iron Man stories. I mean, I wasn't the biggest fan of Matt Fraction's Iron Man run, but it was a serious take on Iron Man. You felt real threats for what was going on with Tony and his memory and everything else. Karen Gillian did a different take. Brian Michael Bendis did a different take. Um, when you read this, you go, man, I long for the days of complex, intricate storytelling like they did for Riri Williams. That's, that's where we're at with this. Um, it's, it's not a terrible, well, I mean, it is a terrible book, certainly, but it's, again, it's it's aimed at kids. And so you, the question that you might have is why, why would you want to aim this book at kids when it is a core character of the whole Marvel Universe? You interrupted the Iron Man comic to do this Iron Man 2020 event, which you only get kind of one shot at. It's 2020 now. The coronavirus is going to wipe everybody out in like three months. So you've only got one shot at, at this 2020 storyline you know, make it a good one. You can't do Iron Man 2020, the big crossover in 2023 when, you know, the lizard people are, are roaming the planet with the cockroach monsters because all the humans are dead. You can't make that comic book then. You got to take your off shot now. So take a good shot. Don't, don't do something that really feels like it belongs over in IDW's for kids land. But, um, you know, the characters, there's a lot of, you could do interesting things with Arno. I mean, the other sad part about this is Arno Stark was kind of built up and uh, brought in with uh with Kieran Gillian's run and and kind of you know a lot of, of interesting storylines that that went on there and uh you know to see it used this way is kind of a you know <laughs> a bwahaha villain um yikes and uh, the sunset bane character is like uh, i mean you know it, it's like if you took doctor doom and the red skull you combine them together and then you took away the subtlety you'd get how Sunset Bane is written. That's what you got. So, I mean, you know, do you want to read this? Probably not. But if you're an Iron Man completist, you probably are going to want to. I mean, this does cap off and tie into whole Iron Man 2020 storyline that was, what, 40 years old now? Maybe not that much. It should, it's been around for a long time. So, should be better. But it's not. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Did you watch, did you read the issue? What did you think? Do you like it? Why are they doing this? I guess that's the question. Uh, answer in the comments below. If you have any ideas, why in the world are they doing this? It's This is how you murder a franchise character. It's very strange. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> that's what I think. What do you think? If you like this issue, I would love to hear from you um, legitimately. I think some people say, I'd like to hear from you, and then they, they proceed to bag on people. Um, I love to meet people who enjoy comics. So if this is something you enjoy, I'd like to here, why? What's what's getting? What do you like about it? Is it just kind of a fun romp for you? What do you like? Um, leave those comments below. Like, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter at Comic Perch if you want to ask questions or you know chat a bit. 
Uh, otherwise, thanks for listening. And um, yikes.